Today is the fourth uh, Sunday after Easter. We're going to be back here again from Mary's. And then also today is, well yesterday actually is the 100th anniversary of our first apparition of Our Lady in Fatima, May the 13th, 1917. So we're also the 100th anniversary of Fatima and this week as well. The epistle for this fourth Sunday after Easter, taken from St. John James, chapter 1. Dearly beloved, every best gift and perfect, perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no change nor shadow of alteration. For of his own will hath he begotten by the word of truth, that, he, that we might be, be, be sent we might be some beginning of his creature. You know, my dearest brethren, and that every man be swift to hear, but slow to speak and slow to wrath. For anger, for, slow to anger, for the anger of man worketh not the justice of God. Wherefore, casting away all uncleanness and abundance of naughtiness, with meekness receive the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. And in the gospel. Take them to that according to St. John chapter 16. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, I go to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, Whither goest thou? But because I have spoken these things to you, sorrow hath filled your heart. But I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go. For if I go not, the paraclete will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of justice and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not in me. And of justice because I go to the Father. And you shall see me no longer. And of judgment because the prince of this world is already judged. I have, set, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will teach you all truth. For he shall not speak of himself but what things soever he shall hear, he shall speak. And the things that are to come, he shall show you. He shall glorify me, because he shall receive of mine, and shall show it to you. Those are the words of the day's holy gospel. Praying the Father and the Son of the Ghost, amen. So in any case... Today, a few considerations on this, the mystery of Fatima and our times, what is being experiencing now 100 years after the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared. And she said, or rather, that she gave us three secrets, three secrets of the children of Fatima. The first secret, showing them the fires of hell, and all the souls going into hell in July of 2017. And then the second secret, that Russia will spread her errors throughout the world. And there will, and there will be many, the, the, the good will suffer with the bad. But the, Russia will spread its errors throughout the world in great persecution. And then the third secret, the one that has not yet been revealed, that the souls going to hell, that Russia spreading its errors throughout the world, is going to spread its errors throughout the church, inside the church. And Rome is going to fulfill the prophecy of Our Lady of La Salette, that Rome is going to lose the faith, which she said back in the 1800s. It will be a great loss of faith from Rome. And that Russia's errors will spread itself within Rome. And the church will be infected with the evil of communism, the errors of Russia, modernism, errors also that Russia spreads to us. And the... the to the, to, throughout the whole church leading to a great loss of souls everywhere. And what's going to be the cause of this loss of souls? The bishops, the pope, the priests, the church. So they will actively be working for the destruction of souls. That church, which is supposed to be working for the salvation of souls, will become so infected with communism that it will be the cause of millions of souls being cast into hell like snowflakes. And that, there, and that there must be a, a remedy against this. So these are the problems. Russia is going to spread its errors throughout the world. 
Souls are going to fall into hell like snowflakes. The, the, the great numbers of souls going into hell all throughout the 20th century. And, and, they, and that the, these errors are not going to be just in the world. They're going to be in the church. They're going to be everywhere in the church. They're going to be spread everywhere. Within the societies, within the religious orders, within the dioceses, within the, the, the structure of the church and its and machinations of how it's supposed to work for the salvation of souls. Within the Roman dicasteries, within the Rome, Rome itself. And in every part of the church, this error is spreading. Like a disease, like a cancer spreading throughout the entire church. And what's the answer? See, they gave a remedy. Consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Spread devotion to my Immaculate Heart. Pray for poor sinners that they be saved from hell. Pray for poor sinners they be saved from hell. Spread the devotion to the Immaculate Heart of, our, of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And Russia must be consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And then there shall come a great conversion and a period of peace. And so we have the 20th century was a century of Fatima. In this last 100 years, that has been, been governed by that, that, that uh, miraculous apparition. And also Our Lady said that in Fatima, but also in other places, until her requests are fulfilled. Until her requests are fulfilled, things are going to get worse and worse and worse. 1917 was 100 years ago. We're now in 2017. And we see that exactly as she said, things are going to get worse. She gave a deadline for the revealing of the third secret to try to prevent, to give strength to souls to stand up against the great evil that would happen in the 60s. And she said, by 1960, not in 1960, but no later than 1960, no later than 1960, this third secret must be revealed. The secret about the wickedness going on within the church. And of course, uh, John the 23rd refused to, to re reveal it. Even pagans in 1960, non-Catholics, they all knew about this third secret and that it should be revealed by the 1960s. And so it was all by the latest 1960, not just in that year, but by the latest. Could have been revealed before that. But no later than 1960. And what happened? It was not revealed. And 1962, the Vatican Council II opened. 1965, it closed with, with a sealing inside of the modernist church, the heresy of modernism in its fullness, put inside of that in the documents, the 16 documents of Vatican II, put inside of the machinations of the machine of the new Vatican II church, which they themselves called the Church of the Council. They gave it that name. We didn't give it that name. They said, we are following the council. We are the church of the council. You're not following the council. Whereas before 1962, before 1965 and the council of Vatican II, if you did not believe Jesus Christ was God, they would say, you're not following the teaching of the church. You're not following the mystical body of Christ. You're not following Christ. You're not following the church. But after 1965, they say, you're not following the council, which is an admission by their own selves. They are not the same church as before. What was before was one thing, 1,930 years from the time of the death of Jesus Christ until 1962. During that 1,930 years, the church was one. After 1965 and the ending of that council, it's another church. Three years Christ built his church. Three years he built his church between the year 30 and 33 A.D while he walked this earth in a public manner. And three years they built a new church between 62 and 65 AD. The foundations have been 1962 and 1965 AD. The foundations have been laid for many, many years for this new church. There have been great preparation for this new church. And now the new church exposes its new doctrine, exposes its new mass, exposes its new blessings, its new spirit, its new everything. Right down to John Paul II, making a new addition to the rosary. Changing the way they say the Hail Mary. Changing the way we say the Gloria Patri. Changing the way we say each of our prayers. Every detail. Changing the dress of the priest. Changing the vestments of the Mass. Changing the words of the Mass. Changing the way in which we say our doctrine. And every single thing changed. And they changed the faith and built a new structure. A conciliar church. And Our Lady spoke of that and said, it must be revealed by 1960. So the people of the world, seeing the exposure, 
The Catholics will say, no, we're not going to follow that new church. We must obey heaven. And we must get, get the Pope to obey heaven. But instead, the Pope did not obey heaven. Not only that the last six popes have disobeyed heaven, Pius XII all the way until the present, they have all disobeyed heaven. And each one bringing the church a little further away from God, a little further away from God, a little further away from God. And when they, when, when, and, and the time will come when, of course, our Lord's Prayer of the Gospel of St. Luke will come into play. Peter, I have prayed for thee that when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. And so the, the time will come. What are we to do in the meantime? What is our duty? What are we to do during this time? We must do as our ancestors and fathers have taught. Now a few days ago, in Virginia, Bishop Williamson consecrated a fourth bishop. So we now have four bishops in the so-called resistance, and three bishops in the mainstream society, St. Pius X, and now there are 6,000 bishops outside. So you got approximately a little less than 6,000 bishops in the regular mainstream church. You got three bishops, the Bishop Filet, Bishop Tissier, and Bishop uh, de Malaretta, uh, de, de Galaretta. And then, then you have now four bishops, including with Bishop Williamson. And then, of course, there's a spattering of all kinds of garage bishops everywhere in the world. Garage with bishops of the uh, St. Vicontis bishops and independent bishops that wander from house to house. Some of them have jobs. And they, they just go from house to house, stay in one place and another. And, and so we have these bishops in the church. And what are they doing? And what is the work of the priests? And what is the work of the society? And what must be done right now in the church? What must be done? Now one thing that heaven did say 100 years ago, that it's going to be the church, the pope, the bishops, the priests, the authorities in the church, who will be most responsible for the damnation of souls. That's the essence of the third secret. That it's going to be the Pope, the bishops, and the priests that are going to be most responsible for the damnation of souls. They're not going to just have a bad example by living immoral lives or by, or by not doing their duty, but they will actively work to teach error, actively work to teach heresy, actively work to push others away from God. And this will be the action of bishops and priests and the Pope if the heaven's requests are not fulfilled. And that's what's happened. And now what do we find? The prophecy of Fatima continually be, continuing to be fulfilled in every detail 100 years later. And all that we can say that we see is that the errors of Russia and the flowing of souls into hell and the corruption of the church these three things have entered into Catholic tradition. That's what happened in the last 20 years. And particularly in the last five years in a very visible way in the Society of St. Pius X since the doctrinal declaration by which we gave up the Holy Roman Catholic faith in, 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 uh, in April of 2012. And then it was revealed to all the priests in the official Cor Unum, in the official documentation of the Society of St. Pius X, Every society of priests gets that little yellow book. And in that yellow yellow book in February, March of 2013, the Doctrine of Declaration was presented to every single priest. This is what I, Bishop Fillet, gave to Rome. And I declare there's nothing erroneous, nothing wrong in this document. Though I admit this declaration is as close to a lie as you can get without lying. So you should teach your children. You should never lie. You should only say as close to a lie as you can without actually lying. Try teaching that to your children. And what will we call you? We'll call you a wicked father. Or we will call you a wicked mother. That's what they did in Greece. We will call you a wicked father or a wicked mother. You don't tell your children, go as far as you can to a lie without lying. And by the way, he lied. Because he didn't go as close to a lie as possible, he just lied and said it was close to a lie, which is a lie. When you say a direct error, such as the new mass is legitimately promulgated, that's a lie, and it's against the faith. And he says, no, I didn't really mean it that way, but he did, and in both ways, technical and theological, it's a lie, both ways, and he knows that. When he says that ecumenism <coughs> can be taken in line with Catholic tradition, it is a lie, it is wrong. The ecumenism of the council cannot be taken in line with Catholic tradition, and so what has happened? The bishop 
who's in charge of the Society of St. Pius X, the priests of the Society of St. Pius X became complicit in the promotion of error to souls, causing grace to be wiped out and causing many souls to be led astray. And what do we see five years later? Many, many souls see no problem with a Novus Ordo priest coming into their parish, such as right now, for instance. They're going to come into the parish and witness the marriage. What do I care? As long as he's conservative. And they have forgotten about the battle of the faith. Now, in the consecration of a bishop a couple of days ago, on May the 11th, almost 100 years after Fatima, Bishop Williamson consecrates another bishop. And immediately after the consecration, he gave a little talk, it was a seven-minute talk. I think it's now on the internet somewhere. It is on the internet somewhere. A seven-minute talk. Seven-minute and six-second talk <coughs> after the confirmations, after the consecration. He begins with all the people laughing. And he says, you know, I told bishops in Dehaus, first thing I told them after the ceremony was, you know, uh, bishop, St. John Chrysostom says that the, the road to hell is paved with the skulls of the bishops. And they all laughed. The first word that he speaks to a bishop that he just consecrated before removing the vestments, walking through the rain, remember they prayed for good weather, it was nothing but rain, walking through the rain, Coming back into the rectory of Father Ringrose's church, down there where the unvest near the Blessed Sacrament. And the very first word is, you know, Bishop, St. John Chrysostom says that the road to hell is paved with the skulls of the bishops, and they all laughed. <coughs> what has happened in the last 100 years? When St. John Chrysostom said those words 1,600 years ago, he was not laughing. And when St. John Chrysostom said, the road to hell is paved by the skulls of the bishops, paved by the skulls of the priests, what does he say by that? Who constructed the road to hell for the majority of souls? The bishops. They're on the road construction crew. And they, they built the road, and they made sure there weren't potholes, and they made sure there was a nice and direct and smooth path straight to hell. And our Lord Jesus Christ spoke about that road when he said, broad is the path that leads to damnation, and many there are who travel it. Many. Lay people? Yes. All pagans? Yes. Many priests? Yes. Many bishops, yes, not just the lay people, not just those that are outside the church. And St. John Chrysostom, referring to that passage of our Lord Jesus Christ, said, Who paved this road? The priest is a man of God. Take him from those things, take him from amongst men for those things that appertain to God. And what appertains to God? His glory. What appertains to God? The salvation of souls. These words are not jest. And they are also not said in a generic way. They are personal. They are personal. It is revealing what is happening inside of the soul. Souls are being led to hell by bishops, and the bishops know it. They know it. They know what they are doing. And so it continues. He says, you know that we are not saving the church. He said a little bit later on in a seven minute speech. We're not saving the church. We are not saving the church. We are not saving the society, the Bishop Williamson. We are not converting the church. We are not converting the society. It is, it is the, uh, the, at this point, it is, it is beyond us. It is beyond us. The society was a pilot light. We are a mini pilot light. To relight the pilot light, we will try to relight it. And, and the pilot light, which was the worldwide society, <coughs> and then relight and reheat the rest of the church. 
So we consecrate a bishop. This bishop is not to convert the wayward Catholics. He is not to convert the society. Now what is he for? And elsewhere in his seven minute talk, the bishop says there are three things that are left to us by heaven. And this is the principal point I want to deal with here. There are three things left to us by heaven. Number one, example, says Bishop Williamson. Secondly, charity. And three, prayer. These are the three things we can do, says Bishop Williamson. Example, charity, and prayer. If we go back to the last words of our Lord Jesus Christ when he was on this earth, coming up in a few days, on the 40th day after the resurrection, on the day of the ascension, our Lord Jesus Christ spoke his last words to his apostles. And he said to them, Going therefore, teach ye all nations whatsoever I have taught you, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And then he was taken up into heaven. This is the conclusion of the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 28. First responsibility, going therefore. He said to his apostles, go therefore. Remember when he created Adam and Eve. What did he say to them? He said, increase and multiply and fill the earth. This is the first command that God gave to Adam and Eve. Increase and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule it. In what? In my name. Now what about a priest? We are called father. We must, we have, a, we are father, which means we are more father. We are father at all times. We are father when we're sleeping, father when we're awake, father when we're praying, father when we're doing nothing. We're always father. Whereas the physical father is only a father part time. We are always father. And why are we always father? Because at every moment we must be generating souls. At every moment we must be increasing and multiplying the church. At every moment, we have to go after souls so that every prayer we say and every neglect that we do on the negative side either benefits or harms souls in the world. Remember what the devil said about one simple priest. One simple priest in a very small church in Ars in France. And what did the devil say about him? If there were three more like him, if there were three more fathers, like John Vianney, my kingdom would be destroyed on earth. So said Lucifer about St. John Vianney. Three more like him and my kingdom is wiped out. He converted souls in America who came all the way from here, all the way over to France to see John Vianney and go to confession to him. He converted, he converted souls at the extremities of the earth, but he never left his town because he went therefore. Going, therefore, is the first thing we have to do as Catholic priests. The first thing we have to do as the followers of Christ. Going, therefore. We even say to the nuns in the convents, in the cloistered monasteries, you had better not be wrapped in your little monastery. Who is the patroness of all missionaries? It's St. Teresa of the Child Jesus. She stayed in her little convent, she, a monastery. She died when she was 24, and she saved souls in India. And she saved souls in China. And she saved souls here in America. And she saved souls in France. And all over the world. Because her heart went forth. Her body was trapped in a small monastery. But her heart went forth. And converted souls. The first word of Jesus Christ. His first command is. Going therefore. Get busy. You go out. And what are you supposed to do when you go out? Save souls. And how are you going to save souls? By teaching the faith. You know, it's still, even in our modern times, doctors still primarily save your health by teaching. The word doctor means teach. It's true that a doctor gives you medication. It's true also that a doctor can chop off your leg, hopefully the right one if he has to amputate. It's true the doctor does heart surgeries. The doctor does do some of these things. But in fact, it's probably 2% of what he does. The main way in which he promotes health is by teaching. 
You need to stop eating 55 donuts every day. You need to change your diet. Even medication, at, when the morning you take the little green pill, and you take the little red pill, you take the purple pill, and you don't drink beer. So even when he is giving us medication, he's teaching. And imagine the doctor who did not teach. Imagine the doctor who had no mouth and no speech. And you went to the doctor and he threw you pills. If you take them ten times, you die. If you take them once, you're cured. So he gives you pills. Take once every day for ten days. Take ten times in a row, you die. Which one do you do? Can't say. Figure it out. The doctor teaches. The first duty of the doctor is to teach. And the priest is the doctor of souls. He must go, therefore. Going, therefore, teach ye all nations whatsoever I have taught you. Now, this heresy of example, and it's a heresy of the Americanists and the liberals. The liberals teach in the last 150 years, 200 years or so, do not talk to others about your faith. Be an example. So when Bishop Williamson says, there are three things heaven has left for us. Number one, example. That's the teaching of the liberal modernists. The liberal modernists tell us, teach by your example. Don't tell me Jesus is God and then, then be a bad guy. If you curse, you shouldn't tell me Jesus is God. If you rob banks, you shouldn't tell me Jesus is God. If you have problems, you shouldn't tell me the truth of the Catholic faith. So when you become perfect, and when you become confirmed in grace, and when you never commit a venial sin in your life, when you've got a halo around your head that I can see, and you have the marriage ring of uh, the saints speak of, of absolute perfection, then talk to me about your religion. This is a lie and a deceit from the devil. And unless there be any confusion, remember on Good Friday, who spoke? Who spoke the truth? It was not a holy apostle. Even the Blessed Virgin Mary herself, the most perfect and wonderful of all, she did not speak. She stood at the foot of the cross as the mother of God. Who spoke? It was a man. A man spoke. And men must speak. Women talk too much. That's one reason why we like church. Because St. Paul says, women, be quiet in church. One of the reasons for that is so it's the only place we can have peace. Women be quiet in church. They speak everywhere else. And they're supposed to speak everywhere else. And they can do a lot of good everywhere else. But not here. Not here. The man must speak. And St. John the Apostle did not speak. St. Peter did not speak. Except to curse and to swear that he did not know the man. Who spoke? It was Dismas the thief. And Dismas the thief, who was justly and publicly being punished for his real crimes, who was a real criminal, who was truly wicked and deserving of death, he spoke and he said, this man is innocent. We suffer the just reward for our crimes, but this man is innocent. We must speak. The first duty is to teach. This duty is left out by Bishop Williamson in his speech. He says, our first duty is to preserve the faith because it's in danger of being wiped out. So let's preserve the faith, keep it. And then he says, we don't need publicity. We don't need publicity. We don't need publicity. Publicity breeds pride. And we need to be humble. And lack of publicity helps make us humble. And God will send to us the souls that understand. So then why do we need a fourth bishop? They have about 300 souls going to them. How many bishops do you need for 300 souls? What is the purpose? What is happening is that we have forgotten our holy faith. It must be preached. It must be preached publicly. It is not sufficient to say example. We must preach the faith and also live by example. But first, it is our duty to preach. What did St. Peter and the Twelve Apostles do? The, the Matthias, the replacement of Judas. They said, let the deacons serve the table. We'll have deacons, seven deacons. Let them serve the table. Let the others do the material works, for we must go and do the office of preaching. And so they went to the extremities of the earth to preach the truth, 
What was the command of Christ? Going therefore, teach ye all nations. Now Bishop Williamson repeats over and over again, as he did in the seven minute talk, people aren't ready, people don't understand. Imagine you went to a college. When you go to college, you walk into the class, and the teacher says, we're going to study calculus. What's calculus? You don't know what calculus is? Well, then what's the point in me teaching you? If you don't know what it is, what's the point in me teaching you? I'm going to teach you how to fly airplanes. How do you fly an airplane? You don't know how to fly an airplane? If you don't know how to fly an airplane, what's the point in me teaching you? In fact, if you know how to fly an airplane, what's the point in going to the class? If you already know everything about calculus, there's no point to go to the class. The reason why you go to the class is so that the teacher can teach you that which you do not know. And then it can enter into your knowledge. And what about the enemies of God? What about them? <coughs> Should we teach them? God will send the ones that they'll find their way to us. We're going to keep everything a secret. We're not going to profess the faith publicly. This is one of the errors and heresies of communism which has spread itself throughout the world. What did the communists tell the pox priests in Hungary? You can have your private catechisms. You can teach your little Baltimore catechism. Do not condemn communism. Do not speak boldly against the heresies and errors of our little communist invasion. And we will leave you in peace. And then it's in the gospel today. What's the Holy Ghost going to do? The three positives, going therefore, teach ye all nations, all things whatsoever I have commanded thee, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. That's the positive command. What about the negative one? The negative one is in the gospel today. When the Holy Ghost comes, he's going to convict the world of three things. So says our Lord. The Holy Ghost is going to come. He will convict the world of sin and of justice and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not in me. What is the first cause of sin? Ignorance. It is not the only cause. But the first cause of sin is ignorance. If you do not know the truth, how can you believe it? If you do not know good, how can you do it? And so the first duty of the doctor, and the first duty of the priest, and the first duty of a lay Catholic who has the faith, remove and dispel the wickedness of ignorance. What do we call Satan? He's the father of lies. Lying is usually a venial sin. It's not normally a mortal sin. Sometimes it is, but it's a serious lie. Sins against the faith, denying the faith is much worse. But why do we call Satan the father of lies? Because when he lies, he puts, he sows blackness, he sows darkness, he sows confusion, he sows ignorance. And from ignorance, it can lead men to all manner of sin, and they will not be able to fight him. If marriage is not to have babies, and you just love somebody and you're with them because you love them, why is homosexuality wrong? They love each other. What's the problem? If you are ignorant about the purpose of marriage, which is to have children for the continuation of the human race, then you don't know the problem. And you don't have an answer to the evil of homosexuality. You don't understand the perversion. Therefore, sin abounds and abounds more and more. How does communism spread its error throughout the whole world? Because of the third secret. Because the church no longer condemns communism, no longer condemns modernism, no longer condemns the grave errors of the enemies of God. And not only that, the church is promoting the errors. Now we find this happening within so-called Catholic tradition. We find bishops telling us, don't go out and spread the faith. The first word is say, our Lord Jesus Christ, go therefore and teach all nations. And also, Saint Pilate, Councilor Trent points out, the other half is given to us by St. Mark. Because, remember, we'll always make excuses. I'm going to teach nations, but I can't teach individuals, just nations. So therefore, St. Mark put the other half. Going, therefore, preach the gospel to every living creature. <coughs> and we see this happen down the ages. St. Anthony preached to the fishes. St. Francis preached to the birds. 
and all are required to preach to men. And Jesus Christ himself, if these, himself said, If these children do not praise me, the very rocks will cry out. The very rocks will cry out. So the rocks must praise Christ. The fish must praise Christ. And the, uh, the birds must praise Christ. And all the creatures must praise Him. Therefore, preach the gospel to every creature. St. Anthony, when the man left the chapel too quickly, without making thanksgiving to the Blessed Sacrament, the donkey knelt in front of him. He knelt because the man would not kneel. And he had to learn from a donkey about the importance of kneeling in front of the Blessed Sacrament. The animals know better than men. And many times this has happened. Preach the gospel to every creature, tells us St. Mark. Preach the gospel to every nation, tells us St. Matthew, so that there is no confusion in between. Now notice that our Lord Jesus Christ never says, preach the nations that are interested, don't preach to the ones that aren't. Preach to the creatures that are well disposed. Don't preach to the ones that aren't. We preach to all. We preach to all nations and all people. Even though when someone rejects and refuses and is living in pertinacious sin, we wipe the dust off our feet. That's after telling him. After telling him. Notice also this first duty is left out. The communists. What do the communists do with their opposition? The same as any of us would do. If you have a man that wants to kill you, your first recommendation is, hate me and want to kill me, just don't pull the trigger. You can hate me all you want, but don't pull the trigger. And if you're going to pull the trigger, shoot at a tree or something, but don't shoot at me. And so, if a man hates you and holds a gun, tell him, don't pull the trigger. Tell them that you, you might waste your ammunition. Tell them you can't hit anything anyway. Tell them to put his gun away. Tell them to surrender. That's what you do with your enemy. Now this is what the communists do with their enemies. They tell their enemies they cannot defeat them. They cannot defeat their lives. They cannot defeat their, the, the, the ways of the communists. And the communists have spread its errors throughout the whole world. And why do we need priests? Why do we need bishops? And not only priests and bishops, but all vocations. We need them to bring souls to Christ and to conquer the entire world for Christ. And what does he call this? Pride. You're so proud. You want the whole world to come to Christ. We are the followers of Christ. And if we are going to humbly obey him, we must humbly obey him without condition. And he said, preach the gospel to every creature. Therefore, let us preach the gospel to every creature. He said, preach the gospel to all nations. There will be preached to all nations. He also said, outside the church is no salvation. And just after this very first introduction, the bishop says, we know we should be Catholic because you're much more likely to go to heaven as a Catholic than a non-Catholic. We know you should be Catholic because you're much more likely to go to heaven as a Catholic than a non-Catholic, as he shrugs his shoulders. What is the teaching of our Holy Church? Why did God the Son become man? God the Son became man to shed every drop of his blood, not an option, in order that we might enter into his mystical body and be saved, and who does not shall be damned. You don't have a better chance of salvation by being in the Catholic Church. The only way you can be saved is by being within the Catholic Church. This is not of God. There must be a conversion. We have to pray for the conversion of the Pope. We have to pray for the conversion of the bishops of the mainstream church. We have to pray for the conversion of the bishops of the mainstream society, Bishop Filet and so on. And we have to pray for the conversion of these four bishops. Laughing at the words of St. John Chrysostom, that the souls of uh, the road to hell is paved by the skulls of the bishops. Well, we need to see skulls to be put back on their flesh and put back on their tongues and speak the gospel and preach the words of the divine truth to souls that are in the great need. And the souls are on fire. The church is on fire. He says, oh, it's beyond us. It's beyond us. No, it is not beyond us. It's not beyond us at all. We have do God made us to save our souls in 2017. He made us to spread the faith in 2017. 
He made us to learn the faith and spread the faith in this time in which we are born, in which we live. And if he, were, if he wanted us to spread the faith in another time, he would have made us another time. He made us for his glory in this time. And every single soul on earth right now, every single soul, the most satanic soul preparing for the Antichrist, to the holiest soul, and every soul in between. All are made by God. All are made for God. All are meant to go to heaven. And God is giving the grace to every soul right now to be able to be saved. And one of the conditions of that grace going to souls and them grabbing onto grace is that there must be preachers of the divine word who go out and speak the words of Christ and repeat the gospel as it has been handed down to us down the last 2,000 years. And Our Lady of Fatima said, the church in her third secret will be responsible for the loss of souls. The church will be responsible. Communism will spread its errors throughout the church. And the church must wake up. The third secret must be revealed publicly to men. And they might see the scandal of the bishops and the priests and the pope and the church. And then the pope must obey Fatima. And consecrate Russia and Mecca Mary in union with all the bishops throughout the world. And in the meantime, we must preach the faith. Preach the faith and preach the faith. Do our best to live the faith, love the faith, and follow the example of the saints down the last 2,000 years. Because there is no shadow of alteration in God, says the epistle. Not a shadow of alteration. And there never shall be. Who's that God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.